Hello everyone, welcome to the video on signal transduction and G-protein coupled receptors. In this video, I am going to explain the detailed process of signal transduction. What is it? What happens in signal transduction? And then G-protein coupled receptors. Now see, G-protein coupled receptors are very important receptors. 60% of the modern medicine will somehow act on G-protein coupled receptors. The, the sensations of touch, taste, temperature all of them are sensed by G protein coupled receptors the, this year 2021 Nobel Prize for Physiology is given given for the scientists who have identified how the pain sensation is perceived and how the temperature is perceived and both pain and temperature sensations are mediated by G protein coupled receptors and they form very important one almost there are 800 types of G protein coupled receptors are present in human body so let us understand about these G protein coupled receptors and this is my YouTube channel you will find all pharma related videos here there are more than 200 videos are there if you like the video content do subscribe just type my name G Sai Rajesh in Google or YouTube you will get the channel let's get into the topic now see the process of signal transduction is the process by which a signal on cell surface is converted into specific cellular response. Now you need to understand these two things. A signal on cell surface is converted to cellular response. This is what is major thing in signal transduction. See, we have four major types of receptors are there. Ion channel receptors, tyrosine kinase receptors, G protein coupled receptors and steroidal receptors. Steroidal receptors are also known as intracellular receptors. Out of these four major types, three receptors are present on cell surface. That means on cells, cell membrane, these receptors are present. Now, so signal transduction is related to these receptors. On the cell surface, you have these different kinds of receptors are there. To the cell surface, a ligand or a drug comes and binds and it causes certain change by which inside the cell a specific cellular response comes. And this entire process is known as signal transduction. See, what does it say? Process by which a signal on cell surface is converted. See, on this surface, the signal is converted into cellular response inside the cell. That process is called signal transduction. There are three major uh, uh, steps are there. First one is reception. Now, understand this word. Reception means a biomolecule will receive a ligand or a signal molecule. See, the biomolecule which receives a drug molecule or ligand is known as receptor. Because it receives a drug molecule or, or ligand, it is known as a receptor. So, to the receptor, a signal molecule, an internal ligand or a drug molecule goes and binds. This is what is the first step, reception of this signal molecule and that results in internal changes that is what is called as transduction so the inside intracellular change is what is known as transduction pathway and finally it results in a cellular response so these are all the three steps involved in signal transduction now some of the other important things see see this is a receptor a typical G protein coupled receptor to which an internal ligand or a drug molecule binds extracellularly this is what is known as first messenger it comes gives a message to this receptor and it results in activation of G proteins and formation of an intracellular molecule and this is what is called a second messenger because this molecule mes gives a messages to the internal environment and that is what results in cellular response see most of the uh, textbooks talks about second messenger so students have doubt about what is first messenger. First messenger is nothing but a ligand or a drug which binds extracellularly. And that is what generates a second messenger and again it gives a cellular response. So this is about first messenger and second messenger. Now let us get into G protein coupled receptors. Now they are known as heptahelical, heptahelical transmembrane receptors. Now understand this one. There are seven helices are there. This is what is heptahelical is known as. Transmembrane means it spans between this membrane to that entire membrane it spans hence it is known as transmembrane you can see the N terminal is outside of the cell C terminal is inside of the cell this is how it looks so the receptor is a heptahelical one now this receptor is coupled with proteins three different proteins are there alpha beta and gamma look at this alpha beta and gamma now these proteins the alpha protein is bound with gdp guanosine diphosphate because it is bound with gdp they are known as g proteins so g protein is this one this g protein and receptor is this one so g proteins are coupled with receptors hence they are known as g protein coupled receptors this is what the name indicates let's get into the more details now see so 
So outside of the cell you have amino terminal is there, inside carboxy terminal is there, it spans through this membrane. So uh, this is how it looks, you have receptor and you have G proteins are there. They are in inactive state. Now once the signal molecule binds, what happens is, see once it binds, there is a domain called as alpha helical domain. AH means alpha helical domain which has got GDP. Once a signal molecule binds, there occurs a conformational change which releases GDP and it gets a GTP. So GDP gets in the place of GDP and once GDP gets in there, the conformational change results in dissociation of the receptors from G proteins. See, look at here, the G protein is associated, is in combined with receptor and once the GTP is there the receptor is dissociated from G protein it's not only that see this alpha protein and beta gamma these two are also separated or dissociated and this is what results in activation see all G protein coupled receptors behave in the similar manner when an extracellular ligand or signal molecule binds the GTP gets in GDP goes out it results in dissociation of G proteins from the receptor as well as alpha and beta gamma uh, proteins also get separated now there are the G alpha protein, there are three different types of proteins are there. GS, GI and GQ. Let us explore about them. So this is, this is what is the basic motive. Uh, when no signal molecule is bound, there are inactive receptors are there, inactive G protein is there and inside enzymes they are inactive. Now once the signal molecule binds, the dissociated proteins will activate this enzyme. Look at this. This is what is the major function of G protein coupled receptors. Now understand this, the major pathway by which internal proteins are activated is by kinases. Kinase means which is attaching a phosphate group. So this the attachment of phosphate group activates so many enzymes and internal protein molecules and most of the G proteins acts by activating kinases. Let us understand about them. Now again see, activation by ligand binding to G protein coupled receptor. A ligand binds to G protein coupled receptors which has got alpha, beta, gamma subunits. Look at this, the alpha uh, subunit has got GDP. Once the ligand binds, the GDP dissociates and it gets a GTP. At the same time, all the proteins are dissociated from this receptor. Alpha and beta gamma are, are separated as well as receptor proteins also get separated. Now these alpha GTP and beta gamma will show modulation effects. This is how uh, the receptor activation occurs. But remember after this activation after some time again GTP is dephosphorylated that means phosphate comes out with the help of RGS regulators of G protein signaling proteins. RGS means regulators of G protein signaling. There are certain proteins which which has got phosphatase activity that means they releases the phosphate and GTP is converted to GDP and again it get, gets back to inactive state. See the active alpha GTP returns to basal or inactive state by RGS proteins, regulators of G protein signaling proteins. So this is how it happens, activation occurs, the modulator effectors will be there, again the G protein double receptor gets back to its native form. Now. The modulator effectors, look at this, once it is activated, you have this alpha GTP is there. Now this alpha GTP binds with effector and based on the activity, there are three types are there. I told you already, alpha, based on alpha, you have three different types are there. GS type increases adenylate cyclase activity, GI type decreases adenylate cyclase activity, whereas GQ type increases phospholipid C activity. Now adenylate cyclase, the job of adenylate cyclase is it converts ATP to cyclic AMP. So this enzyme activity is increased by GS, decreased by GI, whereas GQ is related to phospholipid C activity. Now the released beta gamma also has got effects. They may open potassium channel or close potassium channel or in combination they may also have phosphatidyl inositol 3 phosphate kinase increase activity. So it is not just only alpha subunit, beta gamma subunits has also got activities. Either they may open potassium channel or close potassium channel or activate phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase activity. It is related to cell signaling, metabolism, cell multiplication. So these are all called as modulation effects of G protein receptors. Now one more important thing is there, let us understand this. When G proteins are continuously activated, it is not good. When cell wants to control the G protein activity, it phosphorylates these G proteins. Look at this, it phosphorylates the receptor. 
sorry not the proteins it phosphorylates the receptors this is carried out by g protein receptor kinases the moment you see kinase the job is to phosphorylate once this g this receptor is phosphorylated it becomes inactivated and there are certain proteins called as arrestins they arrest the activity of this receptor and this occurs when there is uncontrolled activation of g protein is there phosphorylation arrests the activities now now see let us understand how this gs protein acts see the signal molecule when it binds it activates gs subunit it activates adenylate cyclase what is the job of adenylate cyclase the atp is converted to cyclic amp now cyclic amp is a second messenger now what it does it acts on inactive protein kinase a now protein kinase a has got two sites catalytic site regulatory site when regulatory site is bound with catalytic site it is inactive once cyclic amp is released it releases this regulatory site and releases this activated pka this is catalytic site is released and it is this is what is active site is so this is how the second messenger activates protein kinase a a typical example see Ep epinephrine binds with beta adrenergic receptor which is nothing but g protein coupled receptor it activates see gtp is exchanged from gtp and this is what results in activation protein protein interaction occurs see adenylate cyclase activity is increased the increased cycle it results in increased cyclic amp and this is what activates protein kinase a so the major job of gs protein is to increase protein kinase a activity whereas gi I, see s means stimulation i means inhibition it reduces the activity of protein kinase a because it in it reduces adenylate cyclase activity so both of them acts in opposite manner now the third type is gq now in this again the signal molecule binds activate g protein coupled receptors and that results in dissociation of proteins and what happens is the activated gq protein activates phospholipase c beta now what is this phospholipase c beta uh, 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 function it acts on phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 biphosphate on this substrate it acts and it releases two molecule diacylglycerol inositol triphosphate now the job of inositol triphosphate is it acts on endoplasmic reticulum and releases calcium whereas diacylglycerol it binds with protein kinase c along with calcium it activates protein kinase c function understand this see gs activates protein kinase a whereas gq activates protein kinase c so protein kinase means it phosphorylates proteins and further effects will be there so these are all the three types now see this is important one so gq results in activation of phospholipase c and receptors m1 m3 alpha 1 are related to gq g protein coupled receptors whereas gi inhibition of adenyl cyclase and m2 alpha 2 d2 are related to these receptors whereas gs activation of adenylate cyclase beta 1 beta 2 and d1 are related to these receptors these things are put in the single slide look at this see receptors for beta 1 beta 2 m2 gs all of them are related to cyclic amp system and cyclic amp it releases cyclic amp activates protein kinase a protein kinase also activates the genes now whereas the other system phosphonated phospho inositol diphosphate system now this is related to alpha 1 m1 m3 receptors angiotensin vasopressin also and it releases diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate the finally activation of calcium and protein kinase c see all of them protein kinases what, what do they do they phosphorylate proteins and they have got multiple effects so this is the, the whole picture of g protein coupled receptor systems now in a nutshell see gs activates cyclic amp gi inactivates cyclic amp gq activates inositol triphosphate and increases calcium levels so this is what happens and this is also increased protein kinase c so this is about g protein coupled receptors very important thing easy to understand if you like the video do share and subscribe the video